I'm Chris Hassel from CBS Sports and the college basketball season tips off Tuesday night. The top four teams in action at Madison Square Garden. Duke is the only one of those four without a first place vote in the preseason AP poll. They lost three top 10 picks, but we're going to gain two of our very best. Gary Parrish and Matt Norlander joining us to preview the season for Coach K's Duke Blue Devils. And uh, I'm going to start with Gary because, uh, I, listen, I just said they lost three top 10 picks, but you actually believe they might have four first round picks on this team. Explain. Well, you don't have to just take my word for it. You can look at most mock drafts, and they're going to have uh, four first-round picks, led by uh, Matthew Hurt, the freshman five-star McDonald's All-American, who is a, a stretch four in every sense of the word and performed well in, in Duke's exhibition um, uh, over, over the weekend. And so he is going to be a big attraction uh, on Tuesday night at the Champions Classic inside Madison Square Garden. And so, yes, it's why, or it's at least among the reasons why uh, most people believe Duke is going to be very good again. They don't have the star power like Zion Williamson or R.J. Barrett. I'm not sure anybody on this team is going to be a top five pick, maybe not even a top ten pick, but they've still got pros all over the court. They've got uh, an experienced and high-level point guard in Trey Jones. Uh, surprise, surprise, Mike Krzyzewski is equipped uh, to compete at the top of the ACC again and, yes, uh, compete for another national championship. Duke finished at Ken Palm last season, despite getting the number one overall seed, which I found to be arguable, uh, the fourth team in those rankings, and they enter Ken Palm as the fourth team as well. It'll be interesting to see if Duke can maintain that. I'm not seeing that. I look at last season's roster, even though uh, crazy young, no doubt about it, and then I look at what this team has this season, and unless we're going to get guys like Alex O'Connell to make a big jump, Javin Delorier, Jack White, what's going to happen there? You're going to be relying on a freshman class that – Sure, it has talent. I, I'm a little bit more of a seller on Matthew Hurt overall, I think, than most. Um, but I'm just not seeing it quite, uh, quite as deep and as effective and as powerful of a Duke team this season versus last. They'll be fun. We'll be talking about them on the Ion College Basketball Podcast probably weekly because it's Duke and they're always interesting. But Trey Jones and the advancements he can make or should make or will make, that's the big story here because he's a great defender. Can he stay healthy at the shoulder issue last season? If he can be a strong offensive player, that will no doubt be key to Duke getting a one or a two seed. It was funny listening to Coach K at ACC Media Days. I think, Matt, you were the one that, that, that was talking to him, and he, and he called Trey Jones an upperclassman. He's a sophomore, but at Duke, at these top teams anymore, if you stay past one season, you do become an upperclassman. Can he carry the load on this freshman-laden team? Uh, so true, Chris, by the way, when he said that I was that, that was my internal monologue was like you're calling him an upperclassman. This is, dude's a sophomore. That was that's just uh, incredible. He can carry the load. I think Trey Jones uh, is a, a tremendously good college basketball player. Um, and I think that he won't run from that kind of responsibility. But when you get into the game to game possession to possession reality of what Duke is. I don't think we're going to look up and see Duke, which, by the way, is squeaked out a win. I know it's exhibition play. I get that. But against uh, a really good D2 team, but there was by no means was Duke dominant there. I'm not thinking that we're going to see Trey Jones have the responsibility or the ask of putting up 20 shots a night and scoring 19 points a game. If you tell me he does that, if you're going to tell me that Trey Jones is an 18-7-5 and five guy, then I will tell you Duke is going to almost certainly be a number one seed. I just hesitate there. So a little bit of a difference. I think he's going to take on that role, but I don't think that he is going to exceed to the level where he is a no doubt about it first team All-American. Uh, to your initial point, uh, a sophomore in college basketball these days, particularly one who's already played major minutes for a national title contender, is like a five-year NBA veteran. I mean, at this point, uh, in the one-and-done era, programs like Kentucky and Duke, um, they almost never have high-level sophomores. Uh, evidence being that uh, Trey Jones is going to be the first um, point guard to start consecutive years at Duke since 2014 and 2015. And so... Uh, listen, there's some flaws there uh, uh, with the Blue Devils. They're probably not going to be a great shooting team, just like they weren't a great shooting team last season, and they don't have Zion to do everything for them. But, man, from talking to college basketball coaches for, unfortunately, decades now, getting older, um, <laughs> you cannot overvalue how important it is to, to just know you're going to be rock solid, if not excellent, um, at the primary ball handling position. And so, 
Mike's got a lot of stuff to figure out. Same way most coaches with um, a lot of freshmen on the roster have tons of things to figure out. But the one thing he knows going into the season and really has known since the day Trey Jones announced that he was coming back to school is that he is going to be good at the most important position in college basketball. That's a great place to start. You mentioned uh, the exhibition game, Northwest Missouri State, and uh, Coach K said offensively, we're not a good shooting team. Uh, that, that seems like something we heard a lot over the last few seasons from Coach K, and that has been the bugaboo for Duke. Is that going to be their biggest weakness again this season, Gary? It, it appears so. I mean, I'll trust Coach K. <laughs> if, you know, he's the one in the gym every day. If that's his assessment, I, I don't know how I could uh, – how I could pick that apart in the preseason without putting my own eyes on it. And that's not a great thing to hear. Usually coaches are at the very least optimistic, even if they're lying to themselves in the preseason, for him to already acknowledge, we're not going to be able to beat you from the three-point line. We're going to have to do other things is, um, yes, concerning for Blue Devils fans. But um, I will say that, you know, last year they ranked outside of the top 300 in three-point field goal percentage, and yet they were still the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament and just a – you know, a miss here or a make there from advancing to the final four and being the favorite uh, to win another championship. And so it will be uh, a weakness if Coach K says so, but th there is um, uh, some evidence that you can be great even if you're not a great shooting team and perhaps Duke is going to have to prove that again this season. They will have to prove it again. Yeah, they ranked 327th in three-point percentage last season. That's the worst three-point shooting team of Mike Krzyzewski's career. From the foul line, it was a bottom two team uh, from the charity stripe in the history of Duke under Mike Krzyzewski. So uh, not inspiring a season ago. And you bring back, you know, some players from that roster who contributed to that. Obviously, you've got a, a, an important new freshman class coming in. But uh, shooting being an issue with Duke is something we've talked about in recent seasons. But if you go back over the years, well, what's, what's a common theme among many that we've noticed with Duke is they would always have this ability to hit that back-breaking three-pointer late in a game. That just has not been the case uh, as of late, and I suspect that it probably won't be the case this season either. All right, let's get into bold predictions. And uh, either one of you going to be bold enough to pick Duke to win the ACC? I mean, it doesn't seem bold, but th as you guys both know, they haven't won the ACC regular season in a decade. Matt? Not that bold. I'm spicy, but I'm not bold in this regard. I don't think that uh, that Duke will be the best team in the ACC. I don't think that Duke will be the second best team, or how about this, the third best wow. team. I think the ACC is going to have four really strong teams in that conference, but I think that North Carolina, uh, Louisville, and yes, Virginia, uh, even though it lost three draft picks itself, uh, set up to be just a little bit better overall. Um, so no, no ACC championship for Duke, which by the way, I should note, Duke has been picked to win the ACC in the preseason, six of the past 10 seasons, and has won the ACC none of those years. So they are overdue in a way to win the ACC, but nothing suggests that that is actually going to happen in 2019-2020. I guess my bold prediction would be that this version of the Duke Blue Devils is going to advance further in the NCAA tournament than the version of the Blue Devils that had the number one, the number three, and the tenth pick in the 2019 NBA draft. No, Duke is not talented as at the top of its roster this season um, as it was last season, but Duke will advance further in the NCAA tournament this season than it did last season, and that by definition means Duke is going to be in the Final Four and at the very least just two wins away once they get there from winning another national championship. Yeah, lost in the Elite Eight last season to Michigan State by one point. Um, the over-under set by DraftKings for wins during the regular season is 25 and a half. half. Matt, um, quickly, do you think they go over that? No, for regular season, getting to 26 wins with this Duke team, I think that's asking way too much. I would go probably under 24 and a half. Hmm. I'm going to put them over. I mean, if I'm, if I'm predicting them to be a Final Four team, if I've got them in the preseason uh, top four, the CBS Sports top 25 and one, um, I, I think I probably need to, if I'm trying to be right about this stuff, <laughs> I, I need them to get over that projected win total. So, yeah, put me down for over, but um, I, I am hesitant to, to go there for a lot of the reasons Matt has already noted. Now they've only uh, gone over 25 and a half once in the last four seasons, and that was last season when they won 26 games. Gary Parrish and Matt Norlander can be heard on the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Download and subscribe wherever you find your podcasts.